on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hi, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's Chris Conti. Thank you for joining us here on Open Line. We are continuing our conversation that we have been starting today about medical debt. Uh, medical debt impacts millions of people across this country every year. Hundreds of thousands of people actually have to declare bankruptcy because of medical debt. There are tens of thousands of people uh, in Tennessee right now who are struggling with medical bills that are forcing them to make impossible choices between getting care or maybe staying home. Uh, this is a situation that impacts a lot of people. Most folks uh, right now say that if they got a $400 medical bill, they probably couldn't pay it off. So we are starting a new initiative at News Channel 5. It is a community initiative that we are calling Medical Debt Rescue. We have given a nonprofit a uh, $15,000 donation, and that in turn has paid off almost $2 million in medical debt for folks around the mid-state. We're gonna expand on that a whole lot more and explain how that's possible, why that's even possible, uh, and what to look out for to know that you have possibly had some of your medical debt erased. But first, we wanna show you a story uh, about a man in Middle Tennessee who is impacted by medical debt, just to give you an, a better idea of how severe and how hard it can be for people who are stuck under this kind of debt. <laughs> yes, sir, this is God country. <sighs> the road for Gary Brown has been paved with anything but simplicity. There's no two same brain injuries in the world. Each step, each movement, Every walk down his street is a reminder to Gary Brown of how long this road has been. So as I'm talking to you, I'm concentrating on my balance. It never used to be like this. Not until one day in 2016, when Gary Brown's path took an unexpected turn. This is what they cut off of me, and that's what's left of it. The 48-year-old was on his motorcycle in Bedford County when he went off the road. I landed in the middle of the road, head first, broke my neck and had trauma brain injury. I landed right there in front of the sign in a couple's front yard that said, prepare to meet thy God. That's where I landed. Gary did not meet his God that day in 2016. They thought I was pretty much dead. But he did have to learn to walk, talk, and swallow again. Six months into his recovery, Gary lost his job, and then he lost his insurance. You're living your life like you're living, and then the carpet gets yanked out from under you, and what do you do? With no health coverage, Gary became one of the 72 million Americans now carrying medical debt. He estimates he owes about $500,000 right now. And it mentally drained me. To the point I was so depressed, I was, I was ready to take a gun and just blow my head off. Why, why didn't I die right there on that road that day? There is a lean on Gary's home, and Gary has realized he has no one to lean on. How do you live a normal life knowing you owe all this money? I don't. I dream about it, I think about it, and I just, I want to pay my debt, you know. But I don't know what else to do. I've, I've run out of options. Gary is hardly alone in any of this. By some estimates, close to 700,000 Americans will be forced into medical bankruptcy this year alone. One in four adults will say that they or someone in their household has had trouble paying a medical bill in the past year. Dr. Melinda Button is a health economist at Vanderbilt. She says most of us couldn't afford to pay off something as small as a $400 medical bill. Auto insurance or fire insurance or things like this. We understand that those are types of insurance for the unforeseen, for the unpredictable. With health insurance, we kind of get lulled. We use that health insurance to go to our routine appointments and pay for routine things. Um, we may not pay as much attention to what is actually going to be covered when we need it most. Perhaps most alarming is that a majority of those struggling with debt have insurance. High deductibles, rising costs have made it unaffordable for countless Tennesseans, though. It's just this avalanche of things that can happen when you get ill, and that's very scary to people. Is the system broken? Yes, it's broken. It's broken pretty bad. 
and people out here don't even know. As for Gary Brown, after two years, he's gotten coverage through Medicare, but that won't erase the half million dollars in debt he has. It's very hard to deal with all this. Each and every day I wake up wondering why am I still even here. Crushing debt that only adds to the burden this man is carrying. The system I believed in and worked for is totally senseless. There are so many other people like Gary Brown out there who are stuck under mountains of medical debt. They can't cannot get out of it, and of course, by no choosing of their own. Most people don't choose to get sick, and they don't choose to get in a car accident, uh, but then they end up with this mountain of medical debt. Uh, we will talk about this throughout the course of the next hour here, but through an initiative, News Channel 5 has given a $15,000 donation to a group called RIP Medical Debt. With that money, RIP Medical Debt then went out and they went to some debt buyers and they bargained with them. And they do this a lot and they said, we will give you $15,000 to buy debt. And debt gets sold and resold so often uh, for, from these situations that it's actually worth next to nothing. Uh, and so $15,000 actually equaled $1.8 million in medical debt. And here's why this is important for folks out there. We have been sending out these yellow envelopes. These yellow envelopes started going out in the mail yesterday. If you get one of these yellow envelopes in the mail, don't throw it away. It means that some or all of your medical debt has been paid off by this group, RIP Medical De Debt, through this donation that we have made. Save this envelope, contact us immediately. We're gonna have my information uh, on our website and on our Facebook page. Uh, but again, this system is so lopsided against the consumer, against the patient, that a small donation, even though $15,000 might not seem like a small amount of money, a small donation was able to wipe out uh, almost $2 million in medical debt. Michelle Johnson is with us now. She is the executive director of the Tennessee Justice Center. Thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Thanks for having and, me. And I know this is something, medical debt is something that you guys deal with a lot. We do. How, how many people, and I, I'm not necessarily asking for a specific number here, but how many people across Tennessee are, are truly feeling the impact of of not being able to pay their medical bills? I would say probably around 70% of Tennesseans have some medical debt, and that's um, that's across the income spectrum. It's not just a, a problem for middle class folks, even people with higher incomes have medical debt because healthcare is super expensive. And so, um, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for lifting the burden off of so many families in this state because it's almost impossible for families to get enough money to pay off the bill that they, you know, had from some sort of illness or, or some sort of car accident. Yeah, we should mention, so that that donation uh, actually helped out 600 people. Oh my gosh. Which is uh, incredible. It's, it's It is, I mean, that's a lot of folks. It, it, you don't really understand kind of how large this is uh, until the, kind of this stuff goes through, but it's, it's, it's also unbelievable to think that this debt is so worthless in a sense, right? right? Right, because it isn't, it, the pain and the burden of it for the families that we represent, it, it's just a heavy burden. People stop answering their phone, they're traumatized by the constant calls, um, and they're so, it, it's a, they can't do it. They can't pay it off, no matter if they work extra hours, no matter if they have three or four jobs, they can't uh, earn enough money to make up the $10,000 bill for a broken arm, you know, which is um, why we need to figure out ways to cover more people and we need to make sure that the health coverage that people have is real and we don't have these high deductible plans. What kind of impact does this have on people's lives when, when uh, I mean, even we're talking about, I mean, you know, I, a lot of the research and, and statistics that I've seen, like we just mentioned, a $400 bill might sink most people. And so maybe, you, you know, then you start talking tens of thousands of dollars. H how does that impact folks? Well, it impacts people in terms of their health because the stress of feeling like they can't ever get out from under this burden is, it's been found to be harmful for people's health. It also means they can't access care. So many um, providers in the community will not admit someone if they have a debt. And even if they're paying on that debt, they won't admit them. And mm -hmm. so they go without care, they go without care from doctor's offices, from hospitals, and oftentimes they themselves choose not to purchase a prescription that their life might depend upon. Oftentimes 
people are choosing between medicine and food, which obviously is just, we can do better as a nation. Surely we can do better. We pay uh, more than twice what any other industrialized nation pays for health care. Um, how can that be that we have so many people who are, who are drowning in this debt? I don't know if you know, but we're number one in the nation at uh, medical bankruptcies mm -hmm. in the nation. And so how do we, how do we start to, um, you know, get out of get out yeah. of that uh, <laughs> well, infamous and, title. And I, and I know that with medical bankruptcy, there's some discrepancy between. Uh, th there's a lot of thought on, on numbers out there on, on exactly how many people are maybe impacted by this, mm -hmm. um, by bankruptcy just because of medical debt. Because a lot of times, maybe maybe the medical debt is kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back. Right? That that someone goes in, someone's maybe close. And then that that kind of puts them the over over the edge. So it's it's hard to quantify, but but regardless, it, it's still it is sinking so many families out there. It absolutely is. And you know if you have a family who you know younger family who's trying to get off the ground. We had a client who was coming through Nashville and had a baby early, and um, had to have the baby here. Um, the family qualified for for ten care, but they wouldn't let them on. It was a two hundred fifty thousand dollar bill for having a baby, um, and you know this is a young family. He he's an artist, um, you know, and she has a low wage job. Like you can't, as a young family, you can't get out from under two hundred fifty thousand right. dollar bill. So appreciate you guys doing that. Yeah, uh, we're trying, and we, we should mention, and we've had a lot of calls about this today. Uh, we have no way of selecting who is getting these yellow envelopes. Uh, unfortunately, and I know there are so many people out there that are struggling with this. Um, this is a completely random process, and it speaks to the way the system works uh, in that people's, people's debt just gets lumped together, these mm -hmm. huge, basically, files, and gets sold and resold. And so a, a lot of times, you know, maybe a hospital is happy to get $10 a month on a you know, $10,000 bill, if that. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not getting anything, suddenly, the fact that okay maybe you know some debt collector out there has a million dollars worth of debt but they haven't been getting anything for years so suddenly when someone comes and offers them ten thousand dollars they'll say okay well that 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 will turn us some kind of profit yeah. um, and i know in a lot of the other research that we've been doing too it's it, these companies these debt collection companies only need to make it's like 1.5 percent <laughs> on on the debt in order to turn a profit that's how i mean spread out and it the it is and so it's just and, and most people i don't think know that maybe they could negotiate or at least or at least try because like you said people don't want to answer the phone they don't want to look at the bills I and mean, i can't tell you how many folks that we've interviewed over the last few weeks who just don't open the mail anymore because it's so stressful because they don't want to see it mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah, it's very it's very um, charitable for you to call the system because I think the issue is <laughs> we have a healthcare system that doesn't work for most everyone in America, and we have political parties who try to keep making polarizing it and not rolling up their sleeves and solving the problems. Uh, healthcare was the number one issue for voters in Tennessee and really for all over the country, and these kind of things are just you know we're. we're Voters are saying to our elected officials, solve these issues. Yeah. Like we don't, we don't really care about your bumper sticker uh, things. We really want you to solve something that makes a difference for our family. And and there are, we, I mean, I know we talk about this a lot, but there's so many people in Tennessee who just don't have insurance to begin with. Mm -hmm. But as we were talking about before the show started, most people that have medical debt have medical debt. And are insured. That's right. Which is, I think is really probably shocking to a lot of folks, right? That's right. That's right. I mean, so we have, um, you know, about $1.4 billion of our money that's sitting in Washington that Governor Haslam tried to bring back to Tennessee to cover about 300,000 people. We haven't been able to make that happen. Um, and that, that if we could, those people would not have to face medical debt. The people who do have coverage oftentimes um, have coverage that isn't really real, and they don't know it until it's too late. We were one of the first states in the nation to enable these Farm Bureau plans to be sold. So they're not actually comprehensive coverage. They violate the um, you know, the Affordable Care Act provisions, but because they say they're a, an association, um, they're able to get around those rules that make the coverage real. So we have get calls from folks who think they have real coverage. They're paying into what they think is real coverage, but then when they need it, it's not there for them. And then they're in debt for the yeah. rest of their lives. Yeah. Uh, we will dig more into this in just a minute. We're going to take a quick break. However, if you want to call in, I know some folks have already been uh, started calling. The number is 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-PLUS, and we will be right back.